Hey everybody, so today in the shop, what we're going to do, we're going to break down this canary wood and turn it into two monitor stands with a connecting piece for a stapler or tape or paper clips or pencil, something. So it's gonna be two monitor stands with a little bridge in the middle. So um, this is the rough concept that we're going for. Just, you know, mock this up, nothing fancy, couple angle joints. Um, so what we have to do first, we have to break this down and get it all jointed and milled and planed and all the rest of that fun stuff. And then, uh, We'll start cutting it up. So we got our canary wood. There's no real specific measurements on this. Um, the base of the monitor is about nine inches. So I want this, you know, top of the base for the stand here to be about 10, maybe a six inch to seven inch rise, you know, for the legs. Um, so at seven, seven and 10, you get about 24. So that's right here. Again, I'm going to do 24 and a half. It's all rough. We're gonna cut it down regardless. So, 24 and a half. We go 49. Right? So, this is going to be one leg or one uh, support. This is going to be the other support. And then we have the rest of it for a little bridge in the middle or, you know, whatever we want. Um, the edges of these are actually aren't that bad. So, I always like to measure and add like a half an inch just because usually you got to chop off some of the end here because it's just not nice. Um, but this actually isn't that bad. I'm still trying to figure out which grain orientation I want. Might go with this side first. Um, I don't know. So it all depends. Um, there's really no wrong way to pick your, you know, grain for this project because it's not a furniture piece. It's literally holding a monitor in the office, um, which basically one person will ever see. So um, yeah, I'm not really gonna stress over it too much. So. Um, I'm going to chop these down on the chop saw, um, take them over to the planer, put them to the uh, joiner, not necessarily in that order, put them on the table saw, and um, then glue them up, and then wait until they dry. Yep. So something I like to do when I'm planing and joint, basically I take chalk. I like using pencils necessarily. Um, in this case, I'm using my son's little Easter egg. I just mark up the whole front. Sometimes I'll even just like cover the whole thing in chalk. That way I know... After I'm done with the planer, when all the chalk is gone, it's good to go. So um, these are actually pretty flat and they're actually pretty decent. So there's actually not too much I have to do with these, but it's still nice to have that visual aid and the visual reference to, you know, see that you got all the corners and all the lay spots, because that's the important part. The reason I like the chalk is because as I was listening to it go through, it sounded really good. It sounded like I was getting full connection with all the board and the, you know, the uh, blades in here. But when I look at it, like I missed parts on here, missed parts over here, I missed almost this whole side right here. So that's why I like a visual representation because just because it sounds good doesn't necessarily mean it is good. Like my ears aren't tuned well enough to know I'm getting the full width of this board. So that's why I like chalk. It works. Some of you may have wondered what I'm using for my push block here. So this is the shitty ones that come with it. Um, I don't like them. They're small. I feel like the grip after a while, like with sawdust, they just get smooth. Like they're really easy just to slide. And when you're pushing it through, I feel like sometimes they just slip on the board. I feel like that's, I just feel like this is more prone to causing injury just because they're not very sturdy. Um, this on the other hand, like, I'm not sure what this is. This is a dense rubber float. Um, I think it's used for tile. I don't know. I found it at Home Depot. Um, but this like is much better at gripping onto wood. Um, I actually have two of them. My second one's probably on the floor somewhere. But yeah, uh, I prefer this. Just have to be careful because it does have metal. So with these, like obviously, I took off some plastic. Plastic. It's not gonna kill the saw. These you really have to be careful because the metal will, you know, really damage uh, your equipment. So you just have to be very careful about uh, the angle that you're pushing at this. Is, but it's like three, four bucks. You know, I think a set of these is like 15. So these all day long um, come in multiple sizes. Yeah, highly recommend these. Can't argue with those. Now comes, it's not my favorite part. It's not my least favorite part. I don't know. Like, I don't like glue ups because I always feel like I'm going to mess it up. Um, so I do a little bit different than other technical, so let me show you what I do. So I have my two work pieces here, all right? Um, 
pretty simple. I put the boards in roughly where they're going to go. I kind of like take a guesstimate and an eyeball of where, you know, the block will end, you know, where the uh, clamp will end. Then, take the boards off, move it back a little bit. Then take some simple painter's tape, and I put it over the area that's being covered by the uh, workpiece. You know, I don't go all the way down, but I found this helps me with glue squeeze out and stuff, so I'm not cleaning off my clamps every five minutes. And, I don't know, cleaning clamps is not fun. Um, I really only have to worry about the glue joint, so, I mean, I could actually use a piece like Yay Big, but I'll just glue the width of the boards. Um, it's super simple. Tape comes off super easy, so it's not like it's, you know, stressful or anything else. It's just super simple. And it works for me. So if you like that little tip, you can have it. If not, you can tell me to go pack sand because I don't know what I'm talking about. So either way, that's what I do. Next, I just go through, you know, grab a, it's a wet rag, it's not sopping wet, but I got wet enough, maybe I can still bring water if I wanted to. I just rub down the glue lines, just because it's easier to clean up later on. It's both sides, because, well, if you don't have glue squeeze out on both sides, then either A, you're not using enough glue, or B, you're not using enough clamping pressure, or C, I guess you could have the perfect amount of glue, but that's not me. Set it to dry. I'll come back to it, I don't know, a couple hours, maybe tomorrow, whenever the wife lets me out of the house again. Because my kids don't need me, you know, all that fun stuff. But Plus, I like uh, wiping it down, just because with the wetness of the rag, it kind of like gives me a rough idea of what the final look will be. I don't like using a bunch of like finishes that change the color of the wood. So it's good to see uh, what you're actually dealing with. And the finish before you get to the finish. Yeah. Um, normally I put like calls or clamps on the edges, but pieces are really dry, really fat, really dense. Um, probably should pay attention to grain orientation. I know they say, you know, one grain has to go like this and the other grain like that. So if they're both like this, they'll cause a cup. Um, I don't know if this small of a piece will actually do that. Uh, if I was building a table or something like that, by all means, sure. Um, I guess time will tell. Okay. So, yep, um, we're going to take it out of the clamps, trim off all the edges, make sure everything's nice and flush, clamp any glue squeeze out that's still remaining, and then take it to the table saw and start your cutting angles. All right, cool, let's do it. All right, got my uh, thing set back up again. I put a little arrow so I know which side to cut on because, well, I'm only cutting on one side, so I need to make sure I don't be dumb and get in the habit of just cutting and cutting. Then both of these will be off. Um, so I have an arrow for my cut side. Set my saw to the same angle as 39, because that's what the copper said. So if it works, it's great. If it doesn't, I probably have to do math, and I don't like doing math. So let's, uh, let's hope, hope, hope this works. All right, angled, uh, much better. So yeah, that's much better. So now because my sled was uh, set correctly. I could just cut the other two uh, legs and be good. So yeah, let's do that. Three pieces of this side, why not? All right, now if I lift it up, that would put together nicely. That is nicely on the tape. So yeah, it's good. All right, now comes this not so fun part of putting the dado into this. Okay, so to cut the uh, dados in my side pieces, um, I had a test piece somewhere. I don't know where I put it. But basically, the blade angle is the same. It's 39 here, it's 39 here. So when this is flush, right, that 39 degree would be parallel to here, which is parallel to the table, which is parallel to the ground, which is whatever, you know what I mean? So this needs to be 39. So I measured halfway in the board, struck a mark. I basically put that mark in the middle of there, so I don't really have a lot of uh, overhang here. It's very tipsy, but if I keep front pressure on this back here, that should work. Okay. So everything is looking good over here. Um, the board's nice and level, fits nicely. So I'm going to take off a little bit more. So it's a little bit proud right there, so I'm going to take off maybe 
eight to a quarter, maybe three thirty seconds. I don't know. Sit there playing a couple times, get nice and good fit. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit thinner, but this what's so dense and hard. It's not gonna make a difference. But that's uh, what it looks like right there. Next is everyone's favorite part, sanding. So I'm going to save you the headache. I'm going to sand um, right now. So I'm going to sand the insides because once I put it together, those are going to be the hardest spots to reach. I'm actually leaving the tape and everything else as is. Um, yeah, I'm going to sand these up real quick and then glue them and tape them. And then once they're dried, I'm going to take off the tape and sand the outside. So. It's not really your typical sand job, but it's gonna work. Okay. All right, we're good. Finished sanding, we are good enough for the inside right now. The several grits. Um, next, we're gonna tape off the inside along the seams just because if there's glue screws out, it's gonna be a pain in the crack to uh, get these glue like drips and everything else out. And I don't really want to deal with that, um, especially since I've already sanded the inside. Um, so we're going to do blue tape on the seams. Um, we're going to glue it up and it should be good. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're all glued up. Um, I uh, disassembled them. Use a straight edge to get all the edges lined up so everything's nice and good on that end. Um, now we just wait for the glue to dry again. Like the longest part of this project is waiting for glue to dry. Not even sanding. Usually sanding is the worst, but this actually isn't that bad. So I mean, we're going to the glue dry, and um, after the glue dries, we're going to come back, sand the outside. We're going to drill some holes into here. Then we're going to put some threaded inserts into here. That way, when you put it together, it sucks everything in so they don't splay out and fall over, and you know, then your monitors come crashing down. So that's the plan for that. But first, we have to wait for glue to dry. After the tape was dry, got my little ruler, measuring it a couple inches. It doesn't have to be exact, so we're looking at around 12 inches or nine and a half. So let's go right around two. One side. So I'll put that at nine and go ten. It'll be eight. Right, two and eight. Alright, cool. We're going on both sides, both pieces. I want my holes to match. It doesn't matter that they match, but for me, it will make me happier. Hopefully nobody will ever see this. Next, we grab our drill as perpendicular as possible. Try to get it in the center of the board as well as lined up on that line. Now these holes are just guide holes. So I'm going to use these holes to set the hole for the board that goes across here. And with the drill, yeah, I should be able to pick this up. Oh my, that's all we're doing. Two holes, good. Cut the depth, set, check, make sure that the depth is deeper or as deep as my pin. Flip it over and do the whole thing again. All right, do a countersink on the holes. Let's add some glue to it. There's no really, I mean, I'm not sure if this is needed, but I do it anyway. You do it on threads. I do it on the side wall. I mean, when I push it in, it tastes just nice. It's a very, very dense wood. Now that everything is done, we're going to put on some Ozzy's oil. Um, never used it. It's simple to do. You can buff it in, wipe it off, stir it. And then, yeah, use sparingly. Three instructions. So it should be uh, pretty simple to do. But it should have a nice, uh, good, clean finish to it. Let it sit overnight, then uh, we'll be done.